Hi friends, for UPSC prelims examination, the map point basic questions are quite important. And every year in the prelims exam, there are around five to six questions that are based on the world map as well as India map. So for 2020 prelims examination, from Sarath Chandra IS Academy, we have collected the important places that have come in the news in the last one year. And based on that, we are going to discuss the map pointing based possible questions that may come in the examination. So this is the first part of the world map. And in this, we will discuss the important seas and surrounding countries, the disputed islands, the straits, etc. throughout the world. Before going to that, let us look at what kind of questions are given by the UPSC in the previous year's prelims papers. See, in 2019, the question is about different seas and the bordering countries. They are testing you whether you know the important seas that have come in the news and the countries that are having a coast with that sea. Similarly, if you see both in 2015 as well as in 2017, they have asked a similar question that, are, that is, what are the countries that are forming a coast with the Mediterranean Sea? The reason was that continuously Mediterranean Sea was in use, particularly because people from the conflict zones like Syria are escaping or they are moving towards the European countries for a better life. And some European countries did not accept them as refugees and some accepted them. But in the way to go to Europe through Mediterranean Sea, due to boat capsizing, there were several deaths. Due to all this, Mediterranean Sea was in use and hence they tested whether you have a fair idea about the countries that are around the Mediterranean Sea. Similarly, in 2017, they tested whether you know the Great Nicobar, which is one of the islands of the Andaman Nicobar, the southernmost islands of Andaman Nicobar. They tested whether you know the placement of the Andaman Nicobar Islands and the placement of Sri Lanka, Java, Borneo, so that you can estimate which one is closer to Nicobar, which one is away from Nicobar. So you should get a fair idea about different regions in the world, their spacing, distance, direction, all these things. So based in, on this direction, in this direction, we will be discussing the important seas that have come this year in the news. The important seas. First, let us look at the South China Sea. In this world map, if you look at China, the yellow color country here, this is China. And China, two important seas surrounding China. One is the South China Sea, which is in the southern side of China. Southern side, this area is called South China Sea. And East China Sea is in the east of the China, this area is East China Sea. So now coming to South China Sea, let us zoom into South China Sea, this South China Sea. Here, the disputed islands, the Parcel Islands, Carborough Shoal and Spratly Islands. The Parcel Islands are claimed by China as well as by the Vietnam. This is Vietnam. China as well as the Vietnam. Whereas Carborough Shoal is claimed by Vietnam, Philippines and China. Similarly, the group of islands called as Spratly Islands. These are claimed by several countries like the Vietnam, the Malaysia, the green color zones, Malaysia, the Bruni here, the small country, Bruni and the Philippines here and the China. So all these countries claim the Spratly Islands. Why? Why this group of islands are claimed by most of the countries in the Southeast Asia? The reason, what is the importance of these islands? The reason is that, firstly, see these islands are mostly uninhabited. Of course, one or two islands are inhabited, but most of the islands are uninhabited. People do not stay on those islands. However, however, it is thought that these islands have very, you know, large scale of oil and gas resources, which are unexplored and unexploited. Similarly, these islands are good fishing grounds. So any, any country which controls the islands can have a greater fish catch. Thirdly, their strategic location. These islands are present in a strategic zone of the South China Sea. So any country which actually controls these islands will have a better control over the South China Sea. Particularly, South China Sea is important because the ships carrying oil, gas tankers or minerals or even passenger ships coming from the Indian Ocean 
into the pacific ocean actually pass through the south china sea in that point of view also in the commercial point of view also so these islands are very important in 2014 or 13 philippines actually filed a case against china in the international tribunal regarding this uh, south china sea and the you know the claims made by china over the south china sea see here china actually claims the entire sea lying between these nine dash symbolical it is called as the nine dash line see this nine dash line symbolical this nine dash line so all the sea lying inside this nine dash line china says it belongs to china traditionally and historically however the international tribunal based on the case filed by the philippines gave a judgment that according to the united nations convention of law over the seas this nine dash line is illegal however china did not consider the judgment and china said that it actually did not pay heed to the judgment even taiwan did not consider the judgment this, this is, these are the reasons why the south china sea has been in news for quite some time now if even if you see the east china sea there are some important islands in east china sea there are islands called as senkaku islands also called as diao islands so even even uh, these islands senkaku or diao islands in east china sea are claimed both by japan as well as china and this is also a conflict uh, you know area east china sea in fact usa actually according to uncloas most part of the south china sea is international waters that means anybody has right freedom to navigate in that area that is the reason why united states states the ships ships of united states navy actually passes through south china sea because united states actually want to want china not to get the complete control of south china sea that's why the ship moves move here and one more island called t2 island it is a actually it is a part of this pratli islands one island called t2 here it will be the t2 island t2 island that is a part of the spratly islands that island is actually administered by philippines however it is claimed by china and taiwan that's why what china is doing is around that three two island china is building artificial islands or expanding the existing islands because three two is important because three two has actually habitation zone there is some population in three two and three two has important you know airport air corridor is also there in three two and three two has lot of fresh water around it which is rare in these islands that's why china is trying to take control of the areas around the three two island that's another reason why the south china sea is in the news this year this year now now let us look at some important rivers in this in this zone in the uh, southeast asia that are flowing into the south china sea let us come from north to south in the north the yellow river actually yellow river one of the longest rivers in in south east asia yellow river actually flows into the yellow sea yellow sea similarly the yangtze river this is the yellow river yellow river then the yangtze river the yangtze river also flows in south china sea east china sea actually they flow into east china sea so yangtze river is also a very long river it actually comes uh, near to shanghai shanghai before it gets into the pacific ocean then you have the min an important river that has come in the news this year is min and then the pearl the pearl river actually the pearl river actually meets the south china sea through the hong kong the pearl river similarly the mekong you might have heard the mekong ganga cooperation project mekong river is actually in the news from quite a few years and mekong river touches almost several countries of the southeast asia it starts from china starts from china it goes into myanmar it comes into laos then thailand cambodia and vietnam finally it drains into the south china sea in the vietnam and mekong is also a very long river similarly one more river this is mekong river one more river the red river the red river also flows from china into the vietnam from vietnam into south china sea the red river this was also in the news so the yellow river yangtze min pearl red river and then the mekong river all these rivers were in news for different reasons and these are the important rivers flowing into the uh, south china sea and east china sea that is pacific ocean 
from the South East Asia. Now, let us look at the straits, important straits that are in the news. Actually, strait is a narrow channel connecting two oceans or two seas. Now, let us look at some important straits. See, this strait, the strait that actually passes exactly between the Indonesia and Malaysia. Actually, this is Malaysia, this is Indonesian island. Between those two is called Malacca Strait. And Malacca Strait is one of the busiest straits in the world because all the ships carrying, all the means most of the ships carrying the oil or any other minerals which want to move from the Indian Ocean into the Pacific Ocean actually pass to the Malacca Strait. In fact, in case if there is a war between USA and China in future, USA definitely will try to block this Malacca Strait because most of the oil coming to China comes to the Malacca Strait. That's why China is developing the alternate straits like the Sunda Strait, the Sunda Strait through the Indonesian islands and the Lombok Strait. The Lombok Strait. So these two are the alternate straits that China is developing in case the Malacca Strait is choked by US or another country during the war. Other important straits are the Karimata Strait. The Karimata Strait. The Karimata Strait actually uh, joins South China Sea with the Java Sea. Here Java Sea. South China Sea with the Java Sea. Whereas uh, between the China and Thailand, a strait called Formosa Strait, Formosa Strait or Taiwan Strait. Actually, it joins the South China Sea with the East China Sea. Similarly, the Luzon Strait, Luzon. The Luzon Strait actually connects the South China Sea with the Pacific Ocean or the Philippine Sea. So these are the important straits that have come in the news due to different reasons and purposes. And we have seen the islands like the Senkaku DIU Islands, the Parcel Islands, Pratley Islands, Karburo Shoal, and specifically the T2 Island, a part of these Pratley Islands. We have seen why it is in the news. Now, see, this is an image that actually shows you exact countries through which the Mekong River passes. See, it comes from China, then goes to the border of Myanmar and Laos, then into the Laos, then border of Thailand and Laos, then into the Cambodia, then Vietnam. Similarly, the Yangtze River, see, it completely forced through China. Finally, in the Shanghai, in the Shanghai region, it goes into the East China Sea. The Red River, the yellow color zone is the complete, the drainage basin, the catchment area of the Red River, Red River. It goes into the Gulf of Taiwan. Now, see, this is a complete a summary, a brief about what we discussed just now. Why it is in the news, South China Sea is mainly because of T2I land, the conflict between the Philippines and China. And what is the importance of South China Sea? The South China Sea is important because it is a primary trade route between the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. And it has a lot of islands that are famous for the oil and natural gas reserves. Then important islands as we have covered and the important rivers that we have covered here. If you see the Yangtze River, Yellow River and Mekong, all the three long rivers of uh, Southeast Asia actually originate from the Tibetan Plateau. Tibetan Plateau. Even the Brahmaputra River of India is from the Tibetan Plateau, originates from the Tibetan Plateau and then takes a U-turn, uh, takes a you know, uh, U-turn and comes into the Arunachal Pradesh. From there it goes into uh, the Assam and from there it goes into Bangladesh before going to Bengal. Now, these are the important strait, the Luzon Strait important strides. We have discussed the location of the strides. So, you should not only keep in mind uh, what are the important strides and rivers and islands, but also the location. They have asked you which, arrange the following islands from north to south or arrange the following strides from north to south. Or the question can be which Molokka strides separate which two countries or maybe the Formosa separates which two countries or islands or Luzon Strait. You know, it uh, separates which two islands, Taiwan Island, Philippine Islands, they may ask like that. Or they, they, they can even ask you the closest area. For example, what is the, which country is nearest to the Luzon? Is it Philippines or Malaysia or Bruni? Questions can be like that. So, you know it to buy an exact location, but a rough idea of their placement, direction and the seas they are passing through is important to answer the questions. This is another just the zoom in just to show you that the Spratly Islands is a group of islands in the location. Similar to the T2 island, just you know the 
view, an aerial view, three to island. It is a part of parcel islands. Similarly, the Senkaku Diyu Islands, the Senkaku Diyu Islands, here, it is between, it's just below the South Korea, disclaimed by China as well as by the Japan. This is Japan. Now, let us see some questions. Let us some questions. Which of the following islands are closer to Malaysia? Is it Spratly, Parcel, Helena, Senkaku? See, Saint Helena is an island in the Atlantic Ocean. You might have heard about Saint Helena during the Napoleon, where Napoleon was kept after he lost the war. So among the remaining Spratly, Parcel and Senkaku, Senkaku is near Japan, far away. So near Malaysia, Spratly Islands are close to Malaysia. That's why Malaysia actually claims these Spratly Islands. See, even if you do not know their location, if you think by common sense, just think out of these four islands, which one is claimed by Malaysia? Malaysia is claiming Spratly Islands. That means what? It is closer to Malaysia. Because any country will claim the islands that are closer to that, not far away from that. Similarly, arrange the following rivers, river deltas from north to south. So, first Yellow River, then Angzi River from north to south. Yellow River, then Angzi River, then Min. Min is not asked here. Then Pearl, then Red, then Mekong. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is order option A. And which of the following straits are nearest to the Malacca Strait? See, from Malacca Strait, definitely Malacca Strait is passing in between, passing from between the Malaysia and Indonesia. So obviously Malaysia is the closest. Even if you do not know the location of these three, by common sense you can say Malacca Strait separates the Malaysia Indonesia, hence it is close to the Malaysia. Now let us look into the come to the next Red Sea. Red Sea is also in the news, is in the news this year, mainly because large natural gas reserves were discovered. In fact, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia now can exploit more oil and gas from the Red Sea. So among the OPEC countries, OPEs, OPEC countries, now Saudi Arabia can put, can again become number one uh, in the production of oil and gas. So it is actually very important, very uh, you know, fortunate for Saudi Arabia to explore more uh, natural gas reserves in the Red Sea. Now, whenever you look at any kind of sea, you should understand what are the, you should try to look at what are the countries bordering that sea because UPSC has a habit of asking what are nearest to it, what is the border of that, etc. So, for the Red Sea, the bordering countries, see, from, start from here, the Saudi Arabia is a bordering country, Yemen is a bordering country, here Djibouti is a bordering country, then Eritrea, then Sudan, then Egypt, Egypt. Even this is also part of Egypt only. This part, Egypt. Then Israel. See Israel here. Actually, Israel and Jordan, both of them touch at this point called Elat. This point, this point. And from this point, you know, a sea is opening called Gulf of Aqaba. See this Gulf of Aqaba. So Israel and Jordan actually touch the Gulf of Aqaba, but Gulf of Aqaba opens into the Red Sea. In that way, you can say that Israel and Jordan are also countries bordering the Red Sea. So, these are the countries bordering the Red Sea overall. These are the countries that have the coast with the Red Sea. Then, what are the important islands? See, look at this. The, the Farsan Islands here. The Farsan Islands. Then, the Doklak Islands. Not the Doklak Plateau. The Doklak Islands. Doklak Plateau is in, um, uh, it's actually be between the Bhutan and China. And you might have uh, heard about the uh, Joklam standoff in the last two years and what India has done to help Bhutan. So then the Hanish Islands are here, Hanish. So the Hanish Islands, the Daklok Islands and the Farsan Islands are the islands in the Red Sea, important islands. Actually, Daklok is a archipelago, a group of islands. islands. So, so when you look at any sea, you should know why it is in the news and what are the countries bordering that sea and what are the important islands in the sea. Now, a quick fact, few facts. Generally, UPS will not ask this kind of questions, but a quick fact too for the, so that you can remember it. Uh, actually, Red Sea is lies in the fault depression between the Africa and Asia. Between both of them, there is a fault. In geography, physical geography, you will be learning how a fault is formed. In such a fault, in the depression, Red Sea is, has been created. Similarly, Red Sea actually connects the Suez Canal. See, the actual the Suez Canal this is the Suez Canal. The Suez Canal connects the Mediterranean Sea with the Red Sea. And this is the Sinai Peninsula. This area is called Sinai Peninsula. 
This Sinai Peninsula separates the Suez Canal and the Gulf of Aqaba. Then here, see here. Actually, this is a strait called this is a strait called Baba Al Mandab Strait. This Baba Al Mandab Strait, actually, as I told you, strait is something that connects two seas or oceans. Baba Al Baba Al Mandab Baba Al Mandab Strait actually connects the Red Sea with the Gulf of Aden. Gulf of Aden. Aden is actually a place, a place in Yemen. Gulf of Aden. You might have uh, heard about uh, Dhirubha Ammani story. So he actually worked in Yemen, Dhirubha Ammani, uh, in his uh, early early age before starting Reliance in India. So now, so if the question the question can be Red Sea opens into the Arabian Sea through what? Actually, let's see opens into Arabian Sea through the Baba Al Mandab and the Gulf of Aden. The question can be. Which of the following connects the Mediterranean Sea with the Red Sea? It is the Suez Canal that connects the Mediterranean Sea with the Red Sea. So these kind of questions can come. Now this is a bigger view, broader view to actually help you understand uh, how to locate the Red Sea in the perspective of the Mediterranean Sea, Black Sea, etc. This is the Red Sea. For example, from the Persian Gulf, if you extract the oil and if you want to take it to the Europe, Generally, from Persian Gulf, it will come out, come out. Actually, this, this strait is called Hormuz Strait, Hormuz, the Strait of Hormuz. So, from the Persian Gulf, you will come to the Strait of Hormuz. From there, you come into the Arabian Sea. This is all Arabian Sea, Arabian Sea. From there, you go into Gulf of Aden. Again, from the Bab al Mandab Strait, you go to Red Sea. From Red Sea, you go to Suez Canal. From there, you go to Mediterranean Sea. If you want to go into America, USA, from Mediterranean Sea, you will go into this one, the Strait of Gibraltar, Gibraltar or Gibraltar. From here, you go into the Atlantic Ocean. Why do you choose this path? Because this is the shortest path. From Persian Gulf to go into Atlantic, from Persian Gulf to go into Atlantic Ocean, if you go through to the Africa, from the South Africa, you know, the Cape of Good Hope, if you want to go through that, it will become a long, really long path. So the shortcut is Persian Gulf to Strait of Hormuz to Arabian Sea to Gulf of Aden to Bab al Mandab Strait to Red Sea to Suez Canal to Mediterranean Sea to the Strait of Gibraltar. Strait of Strait of Gibraltar. From there into the Atlantic Ocean. From Atlantic Ocean, if you want to go into Pacific Ocean, you know you might have heard of Panama Canal. You go through that one. So this is a this gives a broader picture of the Red Sea and where is the uh, Gulf of Aqaba the you know this is the friends this is Sinai Peninsula very really important Sinai Peninsula okay now let us uh, go into the Mediterranean Sea we will see the questions regarding the Red Sea and Mediterranean Sea later on as we cover three to four seas I will go through some uh, expected questions based on these seas now coming to the Mediterranean Sea. See, as I told you already, the migrant boat coming from the African countries and Syria into the Europe, they pass through the Mediterranean Sea and due to boat capsizing, there are a lot of deaths. That is why Mediterranean Sea is in the news even till today. Now, regarding the Mediterranean Sea, see, it is connected to Red Sea by Suez Canal. As we are discussed, Mediterranean Sea, this is the Suez Canal, this is the Red Sea. It connects through Suez Canal, it connects the Red Sea. Then it opens to the Black Sea. See, this is the Black Sea. This is the Black Sea. Now, uh, this Mediterranean Sea opens to the Black Sea through two straits. This is one strait. This strait actually connects the. I'll zoom it and show you a better view. Look at this. The Aegean Sea connects to the Sea of Marmara through the Strait of Dardanelles. And Sea of Marmara connects Black Sea through Strait of Bosporus. So there are two straits, Dardanelles Strait and Bosporus Strait. So this is Dardanelles Strait, this is Bosporus Strait. So the Mediterranean Sea connects the Black Sea through the through the Strait of Dardanelles and then Strait of Bosporus. Told you Sea of Azov. This is Sea of Azov. This is Sea of Azov. This is important sea because see this island, this is called peninsula actually. 
This is called Crimean Peninsula. Crimean. Crimean Peninsula. And you might have heard some three to four years back that Russia annexed the Crimean Peninsula in around 2014. So that actually led to the conflict between the Ukraine and Russia. So this Crimean Peninsula, because of the annexation, the Azov Sea, Crimean Peninsula, Black Sea, they have come in the news and they have become like very important part for civil service examination, prelims examination. So this is the this is the Adriatic Sea and this is the Azov Sea. Okay. Whereas this is, as I show you, the small sea. This is, if you zoom it, you can see the Aegean Sea and the Sea of Marmara. So they are connected through the Black Sea by the Strait of Dardanelles and Strait of Bosporus. Then Mittens actually separates Europe from Africa. See, this is all Africa. And the boy is Europe. Mittens separates the Europe from Africa. Whereas Red Sea separates the Europe, separates Africa from Asia. This is Africa. The west side of Red Sea is Africa. The east side of the Red Sea is Asia. The West Asia. The West Asia. Now, let us look deeper into the Mediterranean Sea and let us observe what are the various countries that are bordering the Mediterranean Sea. See, start from here. Start from here. This is actually Portuguese and Portuguese does, Portuguese actually has a coast, Atlantic Ocean. Portuguese, Portugal does not have a coast with the uh, Mediterranean Sea. Put not there. First country is Spain. Spain has a border with the Spain has a border with the coast with the Mediterranean Sea. Then France. France has a coast. Then Italy has a coast. Then Slovenia. See here. Slovenia has a coast. Then Croatia. This is all Croatia. Then Bosnia and Herzegovina has a coast. Then Montenegro has a coast. Then Albania has a coast. Then Greece. Greece has a coast. Then Turkey. Look at this. Turkey has a coast. Then Syria, Syria, then Lebanon has a coast, then Israel has a coast, then Egypt, Egypt has a coast, then comes Libya, has a very long coast, then Tunisia. Sometimes they will ask you which of the following countries has the longest coast with the Mediterranean Sea. See, for example, Italy, because Italy on both sides has coast. So Italy has a long coast with the Mediterranean Sea. Sometimes they ask this kind of questions, which of the following countries have the longest coast with the sea? They actually test you your idea about the placement of the country or the size of the country. So anyhow, so Tunisia and then Algeria has a coast, then Morocco. Like that, some European countries, some West Asian, Asian countries, some African countries have, share the boundary with the Mediterranean Sea, means they have a coast with the Mediterranean Sea. So try to remember these countries in their own style, either by pneumatics or your own style, okay, remember. Then also, you should uh, try to understand, you should try to understand the major water bodies. For example, see, the Alboran Sea, the Balearic Sea, the Ligurian Sea here, the Tyrrhenian Sea, the Adriatic Sea here, Adriatic Sea, then the Ionian Sea, then the Sea of Crete, actually Crete is an important island, Crete. And the Aegean Sea, the Aegean Sea, and see here again the Dardanelles Strait. This is the Dardanelles Strait, this is the Bosphorus Strait, then the Black Sea. So these are the important water bodies you should remember in the Mediterranean Sea. Then what are the major islands? The next one is the major islands. Look at look here. See the Balearic Islands. Near the Balearic Sea, you have Balearic Islands. Then we have Corsica, the Corsica Island. Then you have Sicily is an island, Sardinia is an island, then you know the Malta is an important island, Malta island, then the Crete island, Crete island, then you know the Cyprus, Cyprus is actually a country, Cyprus is a country, an island country, Cyprus. You might have heard Cyprus uh, mostly because of the Hawala, the black money. The black money previously you may be knowing that much of the black money by the Indians, the uh, Indian uh, politicians or businessmen, was in the Swiss banks, Swiss banks. But now Cyprus has become a haven for the black money. And that is why Cyprus in the news for quite some time. Cyprus. So these are the important islands, important islands. Even Stromboli, see the Stromboli. Stromboli. See Malta is different island, Crete is different island. Stromboli is an island which is which is famous because of volcano. Stromboli volcano. 
actually because of the stromboli volcano they have named it as one type of volcano also if you look at the types of volcanoes in geography one type is called strombolian volcano because there is one kind of fierce type of volcano then other islands sardinia and sicily these islands you should know and see there may be several small islands but these are the major islands that you have to keep in mind the location placement direction whatever so now moving on moving on the important rivers that are draining into the mediterranean sea let us look at the important rivers draining into the mediterranean sea see start again from this uh, you know the spain start from the spain the ebro river ebro river both in the spain as well as it touches the france ebro river from the spain into the mediterranean sea then the rhone river not the rhine river actually rhine river goes from germany it goes into the atlantic ocean into the north sea north sea atlantic ocean it goes into the rhine river this is the rhone rhone river comes from france into the into the mediterranean sea then from italy you have two rivers one is the po river see this is the po river coming into the adriatic sea that is a part of mediterranean sea and then tiber river tiber tiber river so po river and tiber river from italy come into the they drain into the mediterranean sea then the nerveda river the nerveda river in from the bosnia herzegovina actually you no need to buy hat that you no need to remember nerveda rivers in which country they will not ask you they will only ask you which of the following rivers actually drain into the mediterranean sea so the neradwa the neradwa river from the bosnia herzegovina comes into the Uh, adriatic i mean the mediterranean sea then the drin the drin river has drainage basin both in the greece and albania the drin river comes into the mediterranean sea then here you have here see the right side the sehan river the sehan river touches both turkey as well as syria from there it comes into the mediterranean, mediterranean sea then the most important nile river nile river is uh, considered to be one of the longest rivers amazon is the largest river after that nail is the actual longest river the lengthwise nail river from africa comes into the mediterranean sea then the shelif the shelif river from algeria comes into the mediterranean sea they are actually the large rivers then the moloya river the molo river comes from morocco so these are the important rivers that are draining the mediterranean sea though there are several small rivulets see here see here several small rivulets those names you no know, need to remember all the names that i said just now here are the major rivers which you may have to remember major rivers then then coming to the next sea the mediterranean sea is over now let's come to the black sea black sea already we have touched black sea when we discussed the the bosporus strait bosporus strait now now see the black sea opens into atlantic ocean black sea for this you need a bigger picture bigger picture see here is the black sea the black sea opens into the mediterranean sea through the bosporus strait and dardanelles strait from there it goes into atlantic sea through the gibraltar strait gibraltar okay that's given here the bosporus strait mediterranean sea and gibraltar these three actually lead the path from black sea into atlantic ocean and also we should look at the major rivers that are draining the black sea major rivers see danube is a major river danube coming into the black sea then the neister then southern berg then neper neister and neper both are long rivers coming into the black sea black sea then the don the river don actually river don uh, drains into the sea of azov from there into the black sea and just to give a perspective of how long the danube river is danube river here i have mentioned the two longest rivers means the first and second longest rivers the first longest river of entire europe is the volga river it passes through russia throughout its journey and it joins in the caspian sea it drains into the caspian sea whereas danube travels through several countries of uh, europe and finally it comes into the black sea so this volga river and danube are the two longest rivers number one volga number two danube in the european continent european continent so anyhow so these are the major rivers the danube neister neper southern berg and don are the major rivers coming into the black sea similarly the 
let's look at the bordering countries as i told you for every sea you should understand the bordering country because due to whatever reasons ups actually likes to ask questions on which of these countries actually border this sea border this ocean like that similarly bimstek when you come to the bimstek you will study which are the countries which are bordering the bay of bengal however bhutan nepal though did not have a border with the bay of bengal they are part of bimstek but generally the idea of which country forms a coast which, which sea is important for upsc prelims examination now now what are the various bordering countries for the black sea bordering countries see here let's start from turkey turkey and then here the georgia then the russia then ukraine ukraine then romania and bulgaria so these are the countries that are bordering the black sea as i told you this is the crimean peninsula crimean peninsula and crimean peninsula here they have uh, colored it with the same color of ukraine in this map that i have taken from google but however crimean peninsula right now is occupied by russia occupied by russia but usa and some european countries do not accept that this is a part of russia though russia annexed it they do not agree with it and ukraine actually claims crimean peninsula crimean peninsula and crimean peninsula actually a strategic peninsula because it separates the sea of azov with the black sea anyhow so these are the bordering countries now moving on uh, i already have uh, i told you why i have kept this map here in this slide now now generally i want to give you a broad picture of the important seas that are surrounding the european continent european continent and some important rivers draining into these seas for example these are all atlantic ocean all the seas that i wrote in red color are part of atlantic ocean they are on the west side of the europe but these are all very important seas for example english channel english channel is between the uk uk and the mainland europe similarly the north sea north sea is important the baltic sea is important here then the white sea this part of the white sea is important then the barents sea so these are all the important seas that you should remember in the atlantic ocean and i as i told you the rhine river the rhine river actually drains into the north sea similarly see these river the seine river loire river garonne river not so important they are not in the news but rhine river is an important river similarly the elbe river is important drains into the north sea then the niman river into the baltic sea niman river and here the onega river is important that goes into the white sea and meisen river into the barents sea so these rivers which are coming into the black sea are discussed danube dniester dnieper don and volga drains into the caspian this is important actually volga river draining into caspian sea is an important uh, uh, point in the world map so having got an idea about these rivers let us also look at the mediterranean sea which all is sa the ebro river from spain the rhone river from france the po river from italy tiber from italy you know these are the rivers into the mediterranean sea so from italy so from europe some rivers drain into atlantic ocean some into mediterranean sea some into black sea that's all or some into caspian sea so there are only four possibilities for any river any river in europe there are only four possibilities going in atlantic ocean or going into mediterranean sea or black sea black sea means even sea of azov is a part of black sea let us say sea of, or caspian sea that's all and volga is the largest river going into the caspian sea and rhine is the longest river going into the north sea and uh, you know the danube is the longest river going into the, uh, the black sea now let's move on to the caspian sea after finishing the red sea and black sea mediterranean sea let's move on to the caspian sea which is important important now caspian sea is also famous for the oil and gas reserves that is got and it is the largest salt water lake though it is called caspian sea is called sea because it's very very large in the size appears like a sea but actually it's a lake because it is not connected to any ocean by any strait has actually a lake a salt water lake largest lake in the, on the face of the earth and what are the major rivers coming into the caspian sea the volga river as i told you and the ural river terek river kura river the ural terek and kura rivers are important rivers See the Kura River, the Terek River, the Volga River, and the Ural River are the important rivers coming into the Caspian Sea. 
and this is a very important point the bordering countries which countries actually border the caspian sea is very important see the russia the russia this all this see from here this all from here all russia only this all russia russia and from here we have kazakhstan kazakhstan and this is turkmenistan 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 then you have the iran the iran is a border iran then azerbaijan a very small border of azerbaijan However, Georgia actually opens into Black Sea. Georgia opens into the Black Sea. So, Russia, as you, as you come round in the clockwise, as you see, the Russia, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Iran, and Azerbaijan are the countries which actually border the Caspian Sea. And why it's important? Because it's very rich in the carbohydrates, the oil, and natural gas. Now, come to the Andaman Sea. The Andaman Sea. Andaman Sea is a part of Indian Ocean, the Bay of Bengal, and it is in the news because of the Kra Canal. The Kra Canal actually is a project that is planned. That is planned because if the Kra Canal is successfully built, then the ships can directly go from Indian Ocean into the Pacific Ocean in this way. They no need to go through the Strait of Molokka. This is Strait of Molokka. Because Strait of Molokka is already already is like a very busy, very busy. And we cannot depend upon a single strait to move from uh, very important oceans, the Indian Ocean and uh, Pacific Ocean. Hence, this Kra Canal has been planned. And it actually brings a lot of revenue for the Thailand. Actually, this is through the Thailand. We are cutting through the Thailand, the Kra, Kra Canal. The Kra Isthmus. So, it is a news. And what are the countries bordering the Andaman Sea? You can see it here, the countries, the India. India means in order to go to the mainland India, this Andaman Nicobar. Andaman Nicobar is India bordering Andaman Sea, then the Myanmar. See, the, actually the Myanmar coast is a very long coast, see, very long coast, very long, till here Myanmar is there, then the Thailand, this is all Thailand, Thailand is here, and then Indonesia, Indonesia, this is Indonesia, this is Malaysia, so they're all, they're all the, you know, the borders of the Andaman Sea. And now to get a better picture of Andaman Sea, you can see here Andaman Sea, see the Andaman Sea. Andaman Sea, how it connects to the Gulf of Thailand through the Kra Canal. Kra Canal. And how the ships from Bay of Bengal presently are going like this, see, like this, to the Strait of Molokka, they are going into South China Sea. Into Pacific Ocean. Now they can go directly. Now they can go directly. So almost a, a lot of distance is saved by the Kra Canal. Now the Gulf of Aden. Gulf of Aden, we are discussed about the Gulf of Aden. As I told you, Gulf of Aden is a part of Arabian Sea, and this is the Red Sea. From Red Sea, you come through the Bab al Mandeb Strait. From there, you come to the Gulf of Aden. And why Gulf of Aden is news? As you see, the Anti Maritime Piracy Bill 2019 passed in Lok Sabha. This actually gives the powers to government of India to control the piracy in the zones, in the regions through which the Indian ships actually go. Indian oil ships actually come from, see, even from the Red Sea, I'll show you a bigger map here, see. This is the Persian Gulf. From Persian Gulf, the oil comes to India. Even from Red Sea, the oil comes to India. From Red Sea, if oil has to come to India, it has to pass through the Gulf of Aden. And if this place is, is attacked by the pirates, if it has a piracy, it definitely uh, affects the India's interests in this region. That is why the uh, anti maritime piracy bill is passed, not only for Gulf of Aden, but for other regions where piracy is there. However, Gulf of Aden is important because it is close to Somalia. This is all Somalian coast. And Somalia is infamous for the pirates, for the pirates. The Somalian pirates attack most of the ships that come in the Gulf of Aden. There are many English movies also made on that. One Tom Hanks movie is also made on that, that region. Anyhow, Anyhow, so uh, that's why it's in the news. So you should know Gulf of Aden. You should know that Gulf of Aden actually connects to Red Sea through the Bab al Mandeb Strait. You should know that the countries bordering the Gulf of Aden are the Amen, the Somalia, this is all Somalia and Djibouti, just three countries. The Amen, Djibouti, Somalia are the only three countries bordering the Gulf of Aden. And you should also know 
that uh, is one of the largest natural harbors in natural harbors in the world natural harbor means a place where you can anchor the ship where enough depth is there naturally no need to dredge it naturally you can anchor the ship and uh, this gulf of Aden is also called gulf of berbera because because berbera is a place here berbera is a place here that's why it's called the gulf of berbera and i told you this is the babel mandap strait babel mandap strait and i also told you previously that uh, gulf of Aden is internationally important because the oil from the persian gulf persian gulf if it has to go into the europe or if it has to go into america the usa it has to go from see this is the persian gulf right from there it has to come to gulf of Aden. from there into a red sea into suez canal mediterranean sea into europe or from there into strait of gibraltar kind of gibraltar to atlantic ocean to usa hence is very important that is why gulf of Aden is of utmost importance to all the countries in the world strait of gibraltar it is in the news recently because European Union has got hold of a ship. Here is the Strait of Gibraltar. European Union has the Europe has got a hold of a ship in the Strait of Gibraltar, and Europe actually felt that that Iranian ship is actually going to help the Syria. As you know, the civil war in Syria, one group is supported by Iran, another group supported by USA, and you may be knowing about the nuclear sanctions on the Iran, the P5 plus one negotiations with the Iran due to all these reasons. The a ship, the ship moving from, moving uh, through the Strait of Gibraltar from the Iran to Syria, en route to Syria has been caught by European Union. However, Iran denied it. Iran said that the ship is not en route to Syria, but that is why it's the news. Strait of Gibraltar. And I told you how. Uh, the, by the way, the, the name Gibraltar actually. Gibraltar is an island in the southern part of Spain. However, it is controlled by UK. UK actually controls the island. And the Strait of Gibraltar actually separates. The question can be like this. Strait of Gibraltar separates which two countries? It actually separates the Spain from Morocco. This can be the question. Strait from Morocco. So, let us see some questions from all the previous seas that we have discussed. Strait of Gibraltar is nearest to each of the countries. Even if, even if you do not know the distance of the country of Gibraltar, you can definitely stay, say, say it is Spain and Morocco because Strait of Gibraltar separates these two countries. So definitely it is nearest to these two countries. Which are these two countries? Which of the following seas lie below this Strait of Gibraltar? So see any African country, any African country, okay, it's not a country, which of the following seas lies below the Strait of Gibraltar. So here you should know the location of different seas. See, which of the following seas lie below the Gibraltar? North Sea, where is North Sea? North Sea is near UK, so definitely above Gibraltar because Gibraltar is below the Europe, below the Europe, and North Sea is near the UK. Even the White Sea, White Sea is above the European continent, almost uh, near the Scandinavian countries, so it's also wrong. North Sea is also wrong. So come to Aral Sea and Red Sea. Now you should have a rough, rough visualization of where is Aral Sea, where is Red Sea. See, you know. Let us say you do not know where Aral Sea is or you are unable to visualize the location. But then you can say that the Red Sea actually starts below the Sinai Peninsula. That means Red Sea starts below the top part of Africa. And Gibraltar Strait is above the Africa. You know Gibraltar is above the Africa and Red Sea starts from below the Sinai Peninsula. So obviously Red Sea is the answer. So even if you are unable to visualize the Aral Sea, even then you can answer this question. Then which of the following straits are near to Gulf of Aden? Gulf of Aden. Which of the following straits? And I think you know that Gulf of Aden opens into the Red Sea through Bab al Mandab. Not Bab actually, it's Bab al Mandab. And I think I already discussed about each of the straits in the location. Now, which of the following comes in the way of oil ships from Persian Gulf to the Europe? As I told you, from Persian Gulf, they have to go to Hormuz Strait, from there to Arabian Sea, from there to Gulf of Aden. They have to go to Gulf of Aden. From Gulf of Aden, they have to go to Bab al Mandab. From there to, you know, Red Sea and then into the Suez Canal. And then you know all the. So, Gulf of Aden actually comes in between. Gulf of Aden comes in between. Which of the following countries touch the Red Sea? Let's see. And see, Zordan touches the Red Sea. But you should know. As I told you, 
तो जोरडन एंड इसराइल दिस इसराइल दिस इज जोरडन बोथ ऑफ देम टच अ पॉइंट दे ओपन्स इनटू गल्फ ऑफ एक्वाबा गल्फ ऑफ एक्वा ओपन्स इनटू द रेड सी रेड सी सो यू शुड नो दिस वन देन व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग रिवर्स ड्रेन इनटू मेडन सी वोल्गा ड्रेन्स इनटू द कैस्पियन सी रेन ड्रेन्स इनटू नॉर्थ सी एक्चुअली रोन रोन ड्रेन्स इनटू the mediterranean sea i told you rhone actually comes from france it's on the border of france and uh, then uh, almost on the border of france into the mediterranean sea which country shared the longest coast with caspian sea actually caspian sea the longest coast is kazakhstan kazakhstan longest coast let us see how it is the longest coast longest coast for the for the caspian sea where is the caspian sea Yeah, this is the Caspian Sea. This one, this is the Caspian Sea. Look at the Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan, very long coast. Kazakhstan. Actually, if they are given Kazakhstan and Iran, then it's difficult question because Iran also has a long coast. Kazakhstan has a long coast. But in the options, they did not give Iran. They gave only Kazakhstan, Georgia, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan. Hence, it is easy for us to identify that Kazakhstan is the Kazakhstan has the longest coast. But if they are given Iran, then it's difficult question. because they have almost similar uh, coast length with the caspian sea then which of the see in upsc they will test you in a simple way only means they will not for example two countries are at a similar distance from a island they will not ask you among the options one island they ask you nearest remaining islands they will keep it far away so that you will be able to answer by rough image, rough idea means rough idea should be enough to answer this questions in upsc prelims then which of the following countries touch both caspian sea and aral sea it's again the same country see here it's kazakhstan kazakhstan has aral sea this aral sea aral sea and caspian sea both are touched by kazakhstan and this is an important question actually kazakhstan touches both aral and caspian sea aral and caspian sea now let's come into the next sea, persian gulf persian gulf actually persian gulf Got name from Persia, Iran. Iran is called Persia in the ancient history. So Persian Gulf. It's also Arabian Gulf, I think, because you know, Saudi Arabia is also there here. Aram. Anyhow, so yeah, it's also called Arabian Gulf. Arabian Gulf because of Saudi Arabia. This is Saudi Arabia. It's also called Persian Gulf because of Iran. Iran. Now, why Persian Gulf has come in news? See here, Operation Sankalp. Operation Sankalp. Because Lot of Indian vessels actually travel in this Persian Gulf to carry the oil. Hence, government of India launched this Operation Sankalp. I mean, Indian Navy launched Operation Sankalp to protect this area, protect these areas, the Persian Gulf and also the Gulf of Oman. Gulf of Oman is near Oman. Gulf of Aden is near Yemen. Gulf of Aden is near Yemen. So, these two areas to protect these areas for the Indian vessels, for Indian vessels, Operation Sankalp. Hence. Hence, this Persian Gulf has been news. Even without it, also it is in news because India carries a lot of oil from Persian Gulf. The Iranian oil that comes to India to Mangalur, mostly Mangalur, as you know, Mangalur has a strategic uh, oil reserve. It actually comes from the Persian Gulf. So, uh, also you know, it is a the Persian Gulf is a shallow marginal sea on the Indian Ocean that lies between the Arabian Peninsula and Iran. Arabian Peninsula. Peninsula. It's a peninsula because if you see, see this is a peninsula. This is a peninsula. On three sides it has sea, one side land. Peninsula and uh, uh, so Iran, Iran, and it connects the Gulf of Oman and Arabian Sea through Strait of Hormuz. This is the Strait of Hormuz. Strait of Hormuz is between the Persian Gulf. It connects the Persian Gulf with the Gulf of Oman. Oman. Now. Let us look at the bordering countries of this uh, uh, Persian Gulf. Let us start from here: the Iran, Iran, then the Iraq, 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 then Kuwait, Kuwait, then the Saudi Arabia, then the Bahrain. This is the Bahrain. Then the Qatar, the Qatar, then the UAE, UAE. Are the countries? Oman is not again. Oman is not uh, part of the Persian Gulf because Oman actually is after the Strait of Hormuz. We have to tell only those countries which are on the west side of the Strait of Hormuz. Oman actually is borders the Gulf of 
Oman, Gulf of Oman. Okay, so these are the countries: the Iran, Iraq, the Qatar, Kuwait, the Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, UAE. These are the countries which actually border the uh, Persian Gulf. And Gulf of Oman, if you see Gulf of Oman, the Gulf of Oman is bordered by the Iran, the Pakistan, the UAE, this part of UAE. See, this part of UAE is Persian Gulf. This part of UAE is Gulf of Oman. So, uh, UAE and the Oman. There are the four countries that border the uh, Gulf of Oman. As I told you, for every sea, please observe the bordering countries. Because UPS has a special liking towards those bordering countries of the seas. Now, see, it, it is the only entrance from Arabian Sea into the Persian Gulf. If you want to go from Persian, Arabian Sea into the Persian Gulf, this is the Gulf of Oman is the only entrance, hence it is important. Now let's go, let's look at the Israel. Israel, the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. See, Israel, if you look at the Israel, this is Israel. In this Israel, this is the West Bank, this is the sorry, this is the Gaza Strip, this is the West Bank. And these two are called as Palestinian ter territories by those countries which recognize Palestine as a separate country. For example, India actually always uh, supports the two-state solution. So, this country is called the West Bank and the Gaza Strip as the Palestinian territories. And this Gaza Strip has the Mediterranean coast. Actually, Israel has a coast with the Mediterranean Sea and also it has a coast with the Red Sea through the Gulf of Aqaba. So Israel has coasted with both the seas, Red Sea and Mediterranean Sea. It is in the news due to those reasons. Now, Sea of Azov. As I told you, Sea of Azov, Sea of Azov is just uh, above the Black Sea. It is connected to the Black Sea by, by the Strait of Kutch. This is the Strait of Kutch that connects the Sea of Azov and the Black Sea. And this is... Uh, the Azov Sea is a part of the Eastern European countries, the Ukraine, the Eastern European countries, Azov. It is actually the shallowest sea in the world, shallowest, the depth is very less in the sea. And why Azov Sea is in news? Because Ukraine, with the support of USA, UK and NATO, Ukraine is enhancing the coastal security in this area because you know very well the Crimean Peninsula is annexed by Russia. That's why in the Sea of Azov, Ukraine increasing the safety the coastal security then what are the countries bordering the sea of azov simple only two countries this is all ukraine this is all russia ukraine and russia are the only two countries bordering the sea of azov and what are the major rivers flowing into the sea of azov the don river and kuban river we all discussed the don river see don river is flowing into sea of azov means you can say it's flowing into the black sea also you can say that now come to the Adriatic Sea. This is the Adriatic Sea. On the east of uh, Italy is the Adriatic Sea. Again, Adriatic Sea has the longest coast with Italy only. And what are the countries bordering the Adriatic Sea? Let us see. Let us see. From here, let us see. The Italy, the Croatia, and the Bosnia, Herzegovina, Slovenia, and the Montenegro. and Albania. So, I will give you a better picture here. See here. The Adriatic Sea. You see, this is the Adriatic Sea. The Italy, the Montenegro, the Albania, Albania, the Croatia. Here, the Croatia. Is not very clear, but this is a Croatia. This is a Croatia. This is actually the border of Croatia and uh, uh, Italy and Slovenia. So these are the countries that are bordering the Adriatic Sea. Adriatic Sea, which is important. And the islands have added a lot of islands are there, and um, you don't actually remember them, but just see that there's a lot of islands in the Adriatic Sea. Now why is Adriatic Sea in the news? Because in the Adriatic Sea, certain corporates are trying to extract the electric energy using the sea waves, which is actually a very good form of the renewable energy. Once this is successful and we are able to implement the large scale, the same can be used by India and many other countries which have a long coast. See, Italy has a very long coast. So it can exploit this uh, wave energy to convert it into electrical energy. 
No, Tasmania Sea. Tasman Sea. Tasman Sea actually lies in between Australia and New Zealand. And this is a Tasman Island. Tasmania Island. Tasman Sea. And important islands. The important islands are Auckland. The Auckland Island part of New Zealand. Auckland Island. Snares Island. And Lord Howe Island. Are the important islands. In Tasman Sea. Then Aral Sea. Actually Aral Sea is in the news because from several years it is actually reducing in size. Aral Sea is reducing in size. It is getting filled up. Mainly because the rivers Aral Sea by the way is a freshwater. Freshwater lake. It is freshwater lake Aral Sea. And uh, as I told you Caspian Sea is a salt water lake. Aral Sea is a freshwater lake. And a lot of rivers that are draining into Aral Sea. The rivers draining into Aral Sea. Those rivers are diverted. For irrigation and other domestic purposes. So the water is not entering into Aral Sea, a lot of water, due to which Aral Sea is gradually reducing the size and has been an important concern. Also, the drought in Central Asia. Aral Sea is in the Central Asia and in the Eastern Europe. Central Asia. Central Asia. And as you know, Central Asia has drought conditions from last several years. There's another reason why less water is flowing in Aral Sea, because of which Aral Sea you know, is uh, uh, reducing the size or volume. Now, what are the bordering countries of Aral Sea? Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, only two countries. The Uzbekistan and the Kazakhstan, only two countries bordering the Aral Sea. So, if this is the Caspian Sea, exactly on the top part of Caspian Sea, you have Aral Sea. Aral sea. Now, the important seas around the Antarctica, Ross Sea is a sea near Antarctica. Then this is not important. The Weddell Sea. Weddell Sea is important. The Weddell Sea. The Weddell Sea is near Antarctica. Then the Davis Sea. The Davis Sea is near Antarctica. So this Weddell Sea, Davis Sea and Ross Sea and Antarctica have been in use for conservation of the environment. And to reduce the, means to, internationally they want to stop exploiting this water because they are pristine waters. The Arctic Sea has Arctic Council. Arctic Sea is Arctic Council where all the countries that are bordering the Arctic Sea formed a council and they want to save the Arctic zone from more exploitation. However, Arctic Sea is slowly opening up and uh, a lot of oil and gas reserves are found to be there, in, uh, are thought to be there in the Arctic Sea and uh, uh, the over, over ambitious countries could be stopped from exploiting them and the pristinity of the, uh, Arles, uh, the Arctic Sea can be uh, maintained. Similarly, in the Antarctic also, it has pristine seas, they are pristine seas, very clean, no exploitation, no mineral exploitation, no overfishing, etc. And it has to be preserved. Now, see, though this is not related to seas, let me tell you, Pakistan, Iran, Afghanistan, these three are the areas having a lot of drug production, drugs production, and they are transported to different parts of the world. And particularly to, through Jammu and Kashmir, through the Punjab, they come into India because of which drug addiction is increasing in the Punjab and Jammu and Kashmir. And this, it, it follows the same path followed by the terrorist infiltration into India, the, the gun running, the smuggling of weapons. Uh, in the same path, the drugs are coming into India. And even they are using the Arabian Sea, the drugs that are produced in, in this golden crescent, the Iran, Afghanistan and uh, Pakistan, comes through the Arabian Sea into India, which is a, because of which it has become a danger zone. Similarly, the Bay of Bengal, Bay of Bengal, the problem in this is the Golden Triangle, Triangle, though Triangle has three sides, there are four countries actually, Myanmar, Thailand, Laos and Vietnam that are producing the, producing the uh, drugs and heroin, etc. And uh, it actually comes into India through Northeast and the same path is used, same for, for the a counterfeit currency for the uh, gun running or the uh, arms smuggling for the insurgency for terrorism etc and also they are they are actually coming into india through bay of bengal so bay of bengal arabian sea have become the epicenters of drug running mainly because of placement of golden crescent and golden triangle in these two oceans so hence they are in the news so for example you should just remember what are the countries of golden crescent what are the countries in the golden triangle Let us look at some of the questions. Some of the questions. Arrange the following countries from north to south. See, as I told you already, these countries here. 
see the kuwait then comes saudi arabia then comes bahrain then qatar then uae so that is from the north to south then the crimean peninsula has coast of black sea and azov sea both so both a and b c is the answer c is the answer which of the following is true regarding tasman sea tasman sea is on the south of australia this is correct because it's actually on the west of new zealand is on the fizzy see you should know where the fizzy located fizzy located above tasman sea so tasman sea is actually south of fizzy it's not atlantic ocean it's actually pacific ocean so this kind of questions will be asked if you can remember vaguely roughly the world map you will be able to answer most of these questions and in the next video of the world map we will look into the interest organizations some its important countries capitals and the mountains hills and rivers so uh, prepare on these lines in the world map we try to cover most of the places that have come in the news based on that we presentation and i will finish the entire world map in the second video then we will start with the indian map so sarachandra rice academy is bringing forward to you these things however i would uh, tell you that along with these things if you find few other places in the news you please make a note of them and try to locate them in the world map so that it will helpful to you as uh, five to six questions are coming from the map based questions in upsc prelims you will be able to score 10 question 10 marks and 10 marks is really a very big difference uh, to clear indian forest service also this 10 marks can actually help you thank you